Good afternoon, Facebook Live. Apologies for the late 4.30 Food for Thought video today. Uh, I have restarted some of my clients today. So we've just had a little garden party with Lynn, Margaret and Nikki. So they're all weighed in, in the garden. Um, so this is why we're a little bit late, but no problem. They've got a bar. It was great, guys. <laughs> no, I haven't had a drink, don't worry. Okay, so. It's day number four of the carnivore diet. In a few moments, I'm going to be showing you my top-up shop. I'm going to also be showing you what I'm going to be cooking live in today's video. Um, but also, I just wanted to talk about exactly what I've done today. So this morning, for those of you who don't know, my mum's been doing it with me as well. And for the first time, it's day number four, she started to feel like she doesn't need breakfast. So this is the first thing. When you are upping your protein intake, you should feel like you don't actually need breakfast, which is a great sign uh, that you are your body's feeling content and you're feeding your body the right nutrients. So as soon as you're getting craving, as soon as, soon as you're waking, come, waking, waking up in the morning like really like you need something then there is something happening inside that is not necessarily good okay so bear that in mind so think about nutrients focus your foods on nutrients and feeding your body opposed to what you fancy okay so this morning we had me and my mum um bacon and eggs for breakfast um, my mum said oh wow these fried eggs are so tasty what did you cook them in Lard, that's why I cook them in, guys. You only need a tiny little bit of lard, and lard is optional. Uh, obviously, some people might use like butter instead, uh, but your lard is a lot more versatile. You can cook at a really high temperature, so you can make some eggs really fast, and you can flick the fat on it, and obviously, it just gives it a beautiful taste. For those of you uh, young people out there who are like, lard what's that first of all a lot of supermarkets don't even sell it anymore because it's not so popular but it's actually pig fat that is what lard is you can obviously get beef dripping a beef version and 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 the the secret with it is you can also get goose fat and chicken fat the secret is with these fats is just get the highest one you can afford actually pig lard just in a tesco or whatever is so cheap it's like 40 something p 35p it's so cheap so if you are on a budget look again at things like lard because the modern day uh, nutrition is all about what people buy and what they'll pay top dollar for. These cheap cuts of meat, fat, stuff like that is dirt cheap in the supermarket, guys. So, and as I said earlier on this week, me and my mum, we spent 25 quid this week on our five days worth of food. We've never done that before, never, ever, ever. So um, it's carnivore is uh, turning out to be rather successful. Uh, I will share with you my weight loss as well. The first day I lost five pounds. Second day I lost three pounds. Today I've lost another three pounds, guys. So that's 11 pounds in three days. You were all amazed by keto and the fast results it gave. But carnivore is like, wow. Now, this probably won't happen to a lot of you because as many of you know, I eat a lot of vegetables. Um, and as I've been reading, vegetables contain something called toxins, vegetable toxins, which sit in your gut, which disrupt your internal system. So for me, I'm a big veggie eater and obviously just not eating veg is literally detoxing all my insides. Um, and to be honest with you, when I eat a lot of vegetables, I do get quite gassy as well. But I've noticed since I've been on carnivore, like zero. So what I'm gonna do today, as I said, I'm gonna cook some, um, like it's gonna be the most nutritious meal of the week. So this is why I'm doing it with you guys. But I'm also gonna show you, just pop to Aldi, my employer, um, just to buy a few bits and bobs. So first of all, I got some lamb's liver. Uh, now this is a new item in Aldi, if I don't know whether you guys have noticed, but they hardly ever used to have, I don't think they used to ever have liver in uh, Aldi or very, um, only on special buys, but they seem to be doing on the normal area. So I bought some lamb's liver, British lamb's liver. I'll come back to that in a moment. And I also, tomorrow morning, I'm making uh, another live cook along. 
you want to join me tomorrow, you just need some mints and an egg. That's all. I'm going to make a breakfast favourite tomorrow. Uh, this is pork mints, 12%, uh, and I'm using that for breakfast tomorrow. So this is why I've got pork mints. And then the other thing I got as well uh, was some beef mints because that was 20% fat. Now, the huge things you'll see, this was like 150 and this is actually bigger. So the beef one is actually cheaper than the pork. But the amazing thing I always find like shocking, if you buy the 5% or is it 3%, it's like four quid. This is 150. It's like so annoying that like low fat is like so expensive when it's actually the worst nutritionally for you. Um, so as I said, the highest fat possible you can buy when it comes to food, um, if you are focusing on nutrients and you are serious about stopping your sugar cravings. Now, the other things that I bought, I'm getting ready for Sunday because Sunday is gonna be the end of carnivore. Um, so I thought I would get some veg in ready because I'm really excited about Sunday morning when I can start introducing veg. So I bought some mushrooms. I'll be having some mushrooms. Uh, and then I'm also having some uh, broccoli, spouted broccoli. Uh, and then my other favourite as well, I bought two of them, and that is rhubarb, which is low in carbs, uh, just naturally quite healthy for you as well. 99p, bargain. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention, there's two things. The best thing you can do if you really want to improve the world, I know a lot of you guys have been watching uh, the next Netflix documentaries about the sea and about animal products and things like that. The best thing you can do is buy British guys. So the good thing about buying the, the special buys, the things that are on offer, is that generally they are all British and they are generally seasonal as well. So that's the other thing. To get something to taste good, full of nutrients, just having something that's seasonal uh, will be good for you. So you'll see that all these products, even my Morrison's products, are all have all got the British flag on as well. So if you can afford to make one change this week, just make sure all your products are British. And this is something I'm going to be doing now, guys, with my from what I've learned with fruit and veg. Per meal, I'm going to limit myself to one vegetable per meal. So you've seen me having like 10 veg in one sitting. You know, it's just too much for your body to digest in one go. So I'm going to go stick, keep simple, stick to one vegetable per meal. And I may regret saying this, but I'm going to have to say goodbye to aubergines because from Sunday, I'm going British veg only. So only seasonal British veg, because as you know, you can't get British strawberries in the winter. And that's the reason, guys, it's because they're not seasonal. Um, so I am going to stick to seasonal. Uh, and obviously that is good for health, good for your money as well. There's so many good reasons to eat British and seasonal. Uh, so as I said, I look forward to doing that. Now I'm going to move my shopping out the way because I'm going to do a little cooking spot in a moment. Uh, now I've never done this before. I'm actually going to be cooking with marabone actually the bone marrow so that bit of fat inside but it's not really fat it's actually marrow and apparently it tastes like wonderful so some people just eat it like direct i don't really fancy that what i'm going to do today now when i went to morrison's they didn't have any liver so what i bought instead was some ox heart and some ox kidney so these kidney, if you've never had it, it's a little bit stronger than liver. Heart, I can't remember what it tastes like, to be honest. But basically, I'm going to mix that up with some marrow bone, which, as I said, I'm using as fat. And we're just going to cook it up and just see how it goes. As I said, uh, I've never even attempted to cook with a marrow bone before. I've never even got the fat out of one. So it might just be a little bit of trial and error. Right guys, so we'll start off by putting the heat on. I'm just gonna put it on low because we need to dig out the uh, marrow from these bones. Now I know a lot of what a lot of you will be thinking. You'll be thinking like, what about the bone? What is he gonna do with that bone? Um, now the best thing to do with this bone is boil it up guys and make some broth. So I will be doing that, but right now, so again, I'm just gonna, so it's the bone, it's the marrow bone. All I'm doing is using this spoon. It's, it's basically just like fat. And I'm putting this in here. For my slimmers, I've shared Zach's video. Him and his family did this for 10 days. 
And they were loving this marrow fat. They said it was like the tastiest thing ever. So I'm really looking forward to trying it. And obviously mixing the tastiest thing ever with heart and kidney is probably a good idea. You know, if you wanna, it's a little bit like mixing uh, sugar and something you don't like together. <laughs> I was going to use that saying, shit, uh, shit with sugar. <laughs> but we don't want to think of that because that's not nice, is it? I actually quite like liver and I quite like <laughs> kidney. So that was a bad example to use, sorry. So I'm digging out, I'm digging out of the bone, that marrow. Now there's probably people, farmers out there that's probably telling me I'm doing this all wrong. So I apologise if I am doing this all wrong. As I said, it's my first time, and as you know, I like to do th first times live on air with you guys, because you do love it when I have a disaster in the kitchen. So I'm gonna dig out the rest. Obviously, because it's a bone, it does go all the way through there, I think. Now, when Zach was doing this, uh, they actually got a <laughs> grinder out, and they grinded the bone so they could literally just scoop the fat out really easy. Uh, but unfortunately, um, I think using a grinder on Facebook Live, I feel like uh, the police will come knocking or something. <laughs> right, now this one is a little bit... Oh no, it's okay. I've got a bit of the bone. I'll just show you up close, guys. So again, I'm just digging into the middle of the bone. This is just a weird thought that's just come to my mind. I wonder if human bones have got this fat in the middle like this. I actually thought bones were like solid. Uh, nurses out there, if you could let me know what's inside a human bone. So that, this is scooping out nicely. And this one, there is loads of marrow. Look how much I've got out. And obviously, like I said earlier, I'm doing this on purpose because I want my mum to have the same reaction as she did with the eggs this morning. When she said, oh, this tastes lovely. I want my mum to have the same reaction when she has the heart and the kidneys. Now this one is a little bit tricky. There does seem to be a little bit of tendons. If you're vegetarian or vegan, look away. There seem to be some tendons that side, so I'm going to start digging the other side again. To be honest, I've probably got more about en about enough as I need. And because I'm making some broth with the bones, this is why I'm not bothered about getting it all out, because obviously it will make a nice broth. I'm just using the back of the spoon now. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, it smells like a butcher's in here. <laughs> okay, so let's hold it there then, guys. I think we've got enough. So for those of you just joining us, I'm just emptying my marrow bones of the marrow, and I've just put them in the fryer, and right now my hands are completely and utterly full of fat. So just talk amongst yourselves while I just wash my hands of fat. So in that pan there is the marrow fat. In a moment, I'm gonna add the ox heart and the ox kidney. So I repeat, heart and kidney. Now it's really important when you're on the carnivore diet to eat from head to toe. Uh, and basically what that means is you should try and eat every part of the animal purely because it contains the nutrients. Obviously, the normally, to be honest with you, most people, oh, what's that? Uh, most people, they don't actually like fruit and veg. Let's be honest, well, fruit maybe. But a lot of people, they only eat veg for the nutrients. So what we're doing, guys, is eating the organ meat because that's where all the animals' nutrients go. So this is why, these organs are filled full 
of nutrients. So in there I've got my bone marrow and I'm throwing in the ox heart. Now this is already diced, which is very convenient for me. So I can literally just throw it in. So it's basically like a stir fry, which I'm making. Obviously it's quite a hardcore stir fry. And as I said, the marrow is just gonna give it a lovely flavor, a lovely taste. Now, for those of you wondering why I'm cooking this in a wok, I have found when you are cooking with fat, um, it does jump out. So using a slightly higher frying pan or a wok will just keep the fat where it should be. And that is in the pan instead of all over your cooking area. Now, as I said earlier, the good thing about using lard and things to cooking, you actually have it on quite a high heat. So I'm going to turn this bad boy up because we are on Facebook Live and we need to get this cooking. Right, Maureen, I can't eat anything that I could donate. <laughs> uh, yes, a lot of people don't like... Oh, what's that? It looks like the tail or something. Um... <laughs> Would you donate your tail, Maureen? <laughs> was I saying? I can't even remember what I was saying now. But the kidney actually looks quite nice. Or is that the heart? I'm not sure. But the other, the other secret I found as well with liver is the fact that, you know, it's not overcooking it. Because I know a lot of people, they used to have liver from their mum's cooking and she used to basically just like boil it in gravy for hours. So the, the, the secret with organ meat is you actually want it soft. Obviously you want it cooked, but you don't want it overcooked because that's when it goes really hard and it hasn't got any texture at all. So in a moment, I'm just gonna cook this enough so it is cooked. And then we're gonna do a little test, te eating test as well. So all I'm doing is cooking it enough so it's not red. Now the kidney actually looks like it's done, but the heart doesn't. Now I can't actually remember eating heart before in my life, but I feel like spiritually, spirit, spiritually, if you are missing love in your life, surely eating heart is a good thing. <laughs> Maybe you're gonna attract, I'm gonna attract love into my life by eating heart every day. I don't know. But anyway, right, so you can see just by looking, the, the uh, bits of kidney are turning light brown in colour and the heart is staying quite dark. I'm not exactly sure what, pe how, what, would people, what dishes people would have heart in. Have you eaten heart before? Have you seen it in these cooking shows? What do they do with heart? I'm guessing you could put it in a meat pie. Not sure what else you would do with it. I have tried uh, many, many foods before. I always remember in Egypt, uh, my friend ordering me from a restaurant, cow's brain. And I've also had testicles as well, which you've all seen on um, Get Me Out of Here, Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. I think they've probably eaten brain on Get Me Out of Here as well, haven't they? Uh, Donna is agreeing with Maureen that it is brilliant, whatever she can donate. Now one thing that I wasn't quite aware of, that so much water was going to come out of my products. So I'm not sure what that water is. It's a little bit like when you make a stir fry, I always find, you know, if you overcook your vegetables, all the water comes out and it just goes like you like boiling vegetables. So as I said earlier, I don't really want to boil this, but also I want to make sure it's cooked. Now, none of this meat was frozen, so it shouldn't have excess water in, but it is almost done now. Right, I'm gonna turn the heat off, I think. Let's get that heat off. So in this pan, 
is the heart, the kidneys, and marrow fat, which Zach Perna seems to think is delicious. And for those of you wanting to know what marrow bone is, that is it. So I've picked it out of that bone, and I'm gonna be boiling that in a moment to make some uh, stock, some bone broth. Okay, let me get my tasting spoon out. And it is time to bring on the tasting. Okay, what shall we try first? I think we should try the kidney first. So, I'm gonna show you nice and close. So as I said, it's gone light. This is a piece of kidney. With, I'll make sure I've got the juice in, because obviously that is the bone marrow. Let's give this a go. bit squidgy. It's definitely cooked. And it's got a little bit of, um, you know, the bits that hold the organs together. Now you should try and eat that if you can, because again, that's the bit that contains all the vitamins and the minerals. Actually it tastes a little bit like seafood, a little bit like shrimps. A very bloody cheap shrimps. Okay, it's now time for the main event. We're gonna try the heart. Will the single man find love because he's eaten heart tonight? We, we will see. So as I said, here's the heart. Let me show you. As I said, it stayed dark. I'm gonna dip it in that fat. I'm again gonna give it a try. And as I said, I don't think I've tried heart before. Oh. Oh, wow. That actually tastes like meat. It actually tastes like steak. I've definitely not had heart before. That's actually quite nice. Let me try another piece. I'm really impressed with that. I think I'm gonna lie to my mom. I'm not gonna tell her that's heart. I'm gonna tell her that's the finest steak and kidney. And I'll tell her it's the insides of a steak and kidney pie. <laughs> get, get her reaction on that. Right guys, so that's it. That was today's extended day four of the carnivore. For those of you who weren't here at the start of the video, I've lost 11 pounds so far the last three days eating just animal products. Those of you wondering why, because of something called plant toxins, which are anti-nutrients, which are contained in fruits and vegetables. Join me tomorrow for day number five, and I'll be live on Sunday morning with the end, the last way in, and I'll be telling you all the details, my full review of the carnival. But that's it for now, guys. Have a lovely Friday evening. Thank you for joining me. Uh, and I'll be back tomorrow. If you want to cook along with me, all you need is some mints, any mints, and a couple of eggs, guys. Tomorrow we're making eggy meat. <laughs> It's a carnival version of eggy bread. <laughs> so I'll be live tomorrow about 8.30 making that. And as always, I'll be live tomorrow morning at 8 for our Saturday workout, which is Saturday squats. As always, thank you Maureen, who's sponsoring my apron. She provided me with a couple of aprons a few years ago. I have still got them and I'm still wearing. So thank you, Maureen. Good evening.